Kathy, as a writer, you never know when inspiration will strike. And if you're Emma Donahue, sometimes it hits you right in the middle of a dinner party as a flat-out request from another guest. And that's what got the ball rolling on her latest literary endeavor. The Lotteries Plus One is Donahue's first book aimed at young adults. It focuses on two same-sex couples and their seven children. Emma Donahue joins us back in our studio this morning. Good to see you again. Thanks. Okay, so is that really what happened in Seriously, the middle of a dinner party? My friend Tamara was serving this great multi-course New Year's Eve feast and she said to me why are there no good middle grade books about kids with two mums like our kids have and I said well yeah but hang on that doesn't sound like quite enough for a good story and so I started soliciting ideas and by the end of the evening I had this multi-book project in my mind about a Toronto family who've called themselves the lotteries because they won the lottery um, after the birth of their first child so they decided to, all four parents would stay home and homeschool and have seven kids Oh my goodness so Imagine. it's been such an enjoyable project for me such a kind of fantasy project because I've got just two kids and I send my kids off to school so I can get my books written yeah. so imagining parenting a whole other way and everything on a grand scale has I been know. enormously fun I know I think about my dad's one of nine kids my mom's one of eight and I have two kids I'm the um, youngest like you of do. eight myself are you so, really yeah I yeah. loved that feeling of a big house throbbing with activity Activity and exactly. Always quarrels bustling. and gossip. Yeah. And this is a bit of a departure in terms of, you know, uh, from the novels that you've put out recently, uh, switching to young adult novel. Uh, what was that like for you? Was that a challenge? Was it uh, an easy transition? It's, it's technically a challenge. It's harder to write for kids. Um, middle grade in particular, it, it's wonderful as a form, but it's tricky because you have to include all the subtlety and all the kind of rich characterization and themes that you would for adults. You can't simplify it, but it can't be too long and the vocabulary can't be too demanding. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 um, it's a real challenge to sort of fit all that into a kid's book and keep the kind of slightly cozy and, and sometimes idyllic feeling of children's fiction while including a lot of very gritty modern issues. And so I loved it. You loved it. And to find that authentic voice, I understand you put a focus group together that included your son. My 11-year-old son, yeah, at the time, and a few of his friends, I, I paid them in books to uh, read the book and critique it for me, yeah. And, oh, awesome. um, you know, you just... I've, I've drawn on my kids at every level in writing this book, you know, from uh, things that happen to us in daily life. I say, oh, I'll use that. And then they'll negotiate with me about which character I'm to give it to or how I should push it farther towards absurdity. They must feel a little bit of ownership in this as well, totally. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Uh, now, what sort of books I want to know what you were reading uh, as a teenager? What genre was You know, you... I was always reading a real mixture because on the one hand, I'd be reading, you know, classic children's books. I loved things like Ballet Shoes by Noel Stratfield, the E. Nesbitt books, lots and lots of fairy tales. But then I'd also be trying Jane Austen and, um, you know, Tolstoy, Dostoevsky. So I kind of lurched between mm -hmm. genres. And I think my mother used to sometimes think, if you're capable of Dickens, why on earth are you reading Enid Blyton? But, you know, we all like a bit of sugar with our coffee. Well, right. And it's like same, you know, when you talk about music as well, when you ask musicians who they like to listen to. I think Gordon Lightfoot, when he was talking to Kelsey, said that he listens to Drake, which surprised me. But that's the thing. It's a little bit of everything. Okay, true or false, Emma, you write well on a treadmill. I do. It's very unglamorous, really. I'm <laughs> plodding along in my yoga pants, you know, on a treadmill, because it's the only way i found to fit exercise into mm. my day, you know. Um, what do you think that does that help you with stimulating the mind and the body? It and all does. That it too? keeps you awake and it means that I don't have to take off time from my precious working day and go officially exercise. So it builds it in. It's great. I love that. Because if I get really engrossed in what I'm writing, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm writing the lotteries, uh, you know, I, I have 11 characters. It's like juggling multiple balls, you know. So I'm, <laughs> I'm totally immersed in this world and I don't notice that my body is putting in the miles. It's great. It is great. A great idea. I'd love to do that. Okay. Um, before we let you go, there is a stage adaptation of Room we're hearing. I'm just back from rehearsals. I oh, was you the are? first week of rehearsals and we have three different boys playing Little Jack because you can't tire out child actors by making them perform every evening, you right. know? So we have, yeah, three different kids we're rehearsing with and um, it's coming up in, in London, in England, and then it'll move to Dublin and then maybe over here. So it's been thrilling to, to tackle that story again in a totally different way for theatre. Yeah, is it, is it very different? Are you finding it, it is because the story is very inherently theatrical. Mm -hmm. I mean, a kid and a mum in a room, you know, transforming their grim circumstances through imagination. That's like a definition of theater. Absolutely. Well, we really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much, Emma. My Great pleasure. to see you. Welcome back anytime. Emma Donahue, uh, her new novel, The Lotteries Plus One. Uh, you can catch that on uh, at bookstores. We are back in two minutes.